Good morning everybody, I am Sarah with the trains and today I'm heading off on a journey to a random station. I couldn't make my mind up about what station I wanted to go to last night, so I spun a wheel of fortune of 10 stations on the Greater Anglia network I haven't yet been to. And one. One, obviously. But I'm not going to be telling you which one until I actually get there. So I'm on my first train of the day, which is a class 745 on the route to London Liverpool Street. Our first stop of the day is going to be Colchester, so that's not the random station I'm going to. There's only going to be like a five minute change over there, so I'm a little bit concerned. But uh, let's see if we make it. Worst case scenario, we end up at Colchester for a bit, and I can think of worse things to happen. Oh. Hey, good morning everybody, welcome to Great Great Anglia. My name's Derek, I'm your guard on the service today and this is our 8.30 Great Great Anglia adventure to London. On the trip today we'll call it this, Stillmarket, Ipswich, Manningtree, Colchester, Stratford and with a little bit of luck we'll be arriving into London on time at 10.19. just made the train to Shenfield with about two minutes to spare. The conductor on the train going from Norwich to London Liverpool Street was still right though. I never knew that Colchester was the disputed home of the world's oldest hot cross bun. Welcome to this service for London Liverpool um, And I thought, oh, I've got a mini toothpaste, and I thought, oh, I must find the mini toothpaste. We will be calling Witter, Chelmsford, Shenfield, Stratford and London Liverpool Street. Shenfield. Is this our mystery destination? Absolutely not. We've got another quick changeover. I've got to go and find the train for South End Victoria. service for South End Victoria. We will be calling at Billericay, Wickford, Rayleigh, Hockley, Rochford, South End Airport, Prittlewell and South End Victoria. Billericay. Could this be our stop? the service to South End Victoria. It's not. Next station, Wickford. <laughs> Is this our final station? No, absolutely not. 
So Wickford Station was opened by the Great Eastern Railway in 1888 on a line to Southend from Shenfield. There was then also a line opened in 1889 from uh, Wickford going to Southminster. The station was called Wickford Junction in the days when the Southminster line had a branch that went off to Malden West. The London end of the station had a goods yard and a turntable for steam locomotives that uh, was closed in 1954. The remaining sidings are now used for engineering vehicles and for any like broken down trains. The Most of the uh, station land that was in use as like, goods yards and stuff like that is now actually the car park and I'll show you the car park in just a second. Naturally there have been some changes in signal on the line over the years and in 1938 the semaphore signals were changed over to colour light signals. When the signals changed over to colour light signal boxes on the line were closed and I'm going to list those on screen because I don't think I can remember them off the top of my head. I know there was Phantom, Rayleigh, yeah that's the best I can do. In the 90s, signalling was changed over to be controlled from London Liverpool Street and at that point the signal box here at Wickford was closed and demolished. The upper floor of the old Great Eastern Railway building here at Wickford was destroyed by fire in the 1990s, although the rest of the building remained in use for ticket office, waiting room etc. until 2021 when it was demolished so that platform one could be extended to accommodate the longer trains. Sadly there have been some accidents here at Wickford but I'm going to hand over to Narration Sarah to go through those with you just so I don't miss out any details. On the 24th of February 1965, a train from London Liverpool Street to Southend Victoria derailed after departing Wickford. A set of points was moved while the train was passing over them. The rear coaches diverted onto the Southminster branch line and derailed. Two passengers suffered minor injuries. On the 31st of January 1971, the 4.04am passenger service from Southend Victoria collided with a newspaper delivery train. The driver of the newspaper train hadn't applied the brakes before leaving the cab to check on signals. Consequently, the train slipped back down the gradient of the Southminster branch line and collided with the South End train. Thankfully, there were no injuries, but two passenger carriages were extensively damaged and there was minor damage to the newspaper train. As you can see here at Whitford, we do still have places to shelter, even though the station building is gone. We do have a footbridge here at Whitford, so let's go have a walk up and over that. Back here on this side of the line where I originally came in, we do have a little station building now that is a ticket office, ticket machines, and over on the other side of the line there is a little coffee shop, waiting room and toilets. And down here, here is that car park I mentioned. Right, it's now time to go and get the next train. I have now made it to my random destination of the day, which is Battlesbridge, a station which I wasn't aware of until yesterday. Let's have a look round and see what is here at Battlesbridge. So we've just got the one platform here at Battlesbridge, complete with station sign that advises it is on the Crouch Valley line. We've got benches and planters of course, as well as the accessibility ramp for the Class 720s, as well as this lovely little shelter. It does appear to be relatively new but they've gone and put that little bit of edging on the roof of it to make it look more old-timey. 
In the shelter is a defibrillator, as well as a load of leaflets about the Essex and South Suffolk Community Rail Partnership. Ooh, we've got warnings about Asian hornets. We've also got a departure screen, above a help point. Of course we've got the flappy plastic bin, and all of these little bits of artwork. reason for the camera shake there was I went down this dip because I wasn't looking where I was going. But there are spray paint marks around the cracks where the dip is. Apparently these artworks are actually images of some flags that were made for Chelmsford 100 Hidden Gems. A good old smart card reader. An Amazon locker called Arian. Arian? It's called a Arian? Oh dear certain connotations about the word Aryan, so I'm going to go ahead and say that's pronounced A. Ryan. Future Sarah here. I've looked this up online and this is actually a name pronounced Aryan, which is popular in India and Iran and comes from a Sanskrit word meaning noble and educated. We've got a ticket machine, as well as this lovely Community Rail Partnership board, which are oh, complete with the history of Battles Bridge Station. We've also got cycle parking, station information, and onward travel information. Out here we've got the very small station car park, just a uh, few spaces and one accessible space. So we've got this sign at the station that says you can either pay for your parking by phone or at the ticket vendor machine. I just want to check that this is the case. There's so many places now you have to pay for your parking on an app and that's not very convenient if you have not got a smartphone. Tickets. Car parking tickets. Okay, they do have car parking tickets on the, the ticket machine. £1.60? That's actually pretty cool. That's pretty good price wise. The station here at Battles Bridge opened to freight on the 1st of June 1889 and then to passengers on the 1st of October 1889. Up until 1913 it was actually called Rettenden, which is a village about two and a half miles away from here. Interesting little thing to note here, when I've looked at old maps prior to 1913, they all seem to mark it as being Battles Bridge Station although I have seen a postcard from the Great Eastern Railway era that shows it as Rettenden. It would seem the station went by both names. The freight that was handled here was things like domestic coal, cereal, uh, cows, and their manure, which sounds absolutely delightful. During the time that the wooden ferries to Malden West Line was open, there was a Saturday only service between 1889 and 1895 that went through to Colchester for market day traffic. Interestingly, there were some uh, very unusual specials during the Edwardian period whereby people from London could come up and buy acres of land for £10 to build themselves a home um, at areas along this line, which seems rather odd to me. Maybe that's just a modern viewpoint though. For such a small out of the way station, Battles Bridge did see some action during the war, so maybe Battles Bridge is appropriate. In 1915, when the German Zeppelins started coming across the channel, they actually used the line as a guide to get to London. The station master here actually reported back to a chief person at the Great Eastern Railway if there was a Zeppelin spotted over the station. During the Second World War, with all the men being called up for service in the armed forces, women took on roles at this station of ticket office clerks, signallers and of shunting goods wagons in the goods yard day and night. There was also troop trains that went through this station going to RAF at Bradwell. Also during the Second World War, passenger services through Battlesbridge to Malden West were withdrawn on the 11th of September 1939, never to be reinstated while services on the line to Southminster were considerably reduced. Freight services through to Cold Norton were also withdrawn from February 1941.
Sadly, there was some tragedy during the war at this station. A doodle bug hit the railway cottages at the bottom of the goods yard and fortunately nobody was hurt. The staff were able to find alternative accommodation. DMUs took over the work of the steam hauled services in 1956 and the last steam train at Battlesbridge served a good service in 1962. Interestingly, in 1963 there was some absolutely horrendous snow in the area, which meant a DMU got stuck between Wickford and Battlesbridge. The passengers on the DMU had to walk back to Battlesbridge, where the staff provided them with a refreshment, which is excellent, while they waited for the DMU to be excavated, is that the right word? To get the line running again. Freight services were removed in 1965 and the 34 lever signal box and goods loop were taken out of action, with freight movements finally being closed in December 1966. Very sadly, the station building was demolished in 1968 under British Rail as part of an economy measure. The station then also became unstaffed. In this old photograph, you can see the original red brick and tile station building and on the left hand side of the photograph there's also the old signal box. Sadly in September 1968 there was an accident at the station when three ballast wagons and a brake van coming from extraction pits at Southminster derailed. The guard sustained a broken collarbone and eight yards of track were ripped up by the wagons. In 1969 British Rail announced the withdrawal of Sunday services to this station and that remained the case until 1979 when a petition from locals and some funds being allocated from the Ministry of Transport meant that these services were reinstated. The line from Wickford to Southminster was electrified in 1986 allowing for EMUs to run on this line. Excellent news, I do love a good EMU. Now the station platform was upgraded to accommodate eight carriage trains but unfortunately some of the trains going to London were 12 carriages which meant that some of them just didn't stop at Battles Bridge. In 2004 class 321 EMUs known as Dusty Bins replaced the old slam door EMUs going through this station and then in 2020 the issue of trains that were 12 cars long just not stopping here was resolved when Greater Anglia introduced the class 720s. I've had to retreat to the waiting shelter again because the wind just suddenly got up. In 1994 the goods yard was auctioned off and the land has become part of something a bit unusual. It's not a car park this time. I normally find myself saying the goods yard has become the car park but we're going to go and see what that is. Well, I would show you if I hadn't made a great big boo-boo. The land that was auctioned off is now an antiques and crafts centre. The thing about Battlesbridge is that there's actually two antiques and crafts centres. I think you can see where I'm going with this. I picked the wrong one. So I can't show you what the one on the site of the old goods yard is like. I didn't realise my mistake until I was back home. I did, however, have a very nice time at the tea room. I'm sure the other one is absolutely lovely and well worth a visit. It seems there's also a motorcycle museum if you're into that sort of thing. I, however, did not get to visit it. I am dumb. It is so cold today. We are in the grip of Storm Bert. I really think they're running out of names for storms now since we've got one called Bert. Uh, next one, Ernie. But it is absolutely freezing. The weather told me it was going to be 10, 12 degrees. Lies. Just come back and discovered there is actually a board for the antique centre at the station. Come by train and travel back in time. I actually don't know what this area is being used for, but it's obviously old railway land. We'll see what it was on the map. There is certainly some old concrete and such like down here, so I'd be intrigued to see what that was. From looking at this map from 1955, I would say that that land is the old good sidings and speculate that the concrete I've found is to do with the old cattle pens. 
This photograph from 1970 gives you a view of the good shed from the line. I'm genuinely so glad that I decided to let a random wheel spinning website decide where I came on a train journey to today. It's been great, I'd never even heard of this station until I looked up a list of the Greater Anglia Network last night and it's great. It's a really cute little area and that antique centre is brilliant. I do advise a visit to it and uh, yeah, nice tea room, nice hot tea. And station's got so much more history than I envisaged considering it's just this tiny little out of the way one platform station. Although I should have learned by now that the most unlikely places have the most surprising history. I'll be honest, it is absolutely freezing today though and uh, I'm going to have to uh, add some gear to this outfit because I can't feel my fingers particularly well. It's now just time for me to say thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do leave a like and a comment and consider subscribing if you want to see more from me. I think I definitely will do another wheel spin video in the future because I've absolutely loved this, even though the changeovers were quite quick. Um, but I'll see you all next time for another railway adventure. Bye. As always, an extra special shout out to all of my patrons and channel members whose names are listed on screen right now, as well as anybody who donates to me on Ko-fi. You really do keep the channel going. There's just time for me to now ponder whether I should get a bacon sandwich on the uh, train from Colchester to Norwich, assuming the cafe bar is operational. Uh, they ran out of bacon earlier, so I mean, I, guess I, I could have sausage. The way I had a sausage sandwich yesterday, but then again, I could quite happily eat a sausage sandwich every day. These are the important things in life. Maybe that should be a video for the future, the history of sausages. I just have to find a way to bring the railways into it. I'm sure I can. Or I could just eat a sausage on a train. And here comes the train to take me back to Wickford. service for Wickford. We will be calling at Wickford. The next stop will be Wickford.